Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at a free and wonderful piece of software that allows you to work with audio signals and audio files. And for example, it allows you to record audio from a microphone. It allows you to edit the audio. It allows you to apply effects to the audio. It allows you to save the audio as a file. A really wonderful piece of software. And this software is called Audacity. Again, it's free software. And if you do any work with audio, it's something you might want to consider. And you can see here what I've done is I have recorded from a microphone about one second worth of audio signal. And I'll go up and I'll play it. Testing one, two. And it's basically me saying testing one, two. And this is the amplitude over time of that audio signal. And once we have that, we can apply all kinds of effects and do editing, whatever we want. Now, the reason why we are talking about this software is in a future set of videos, we're going to use this Audacity software to generate audio waveforms that we're going to bring into an application that we're going to develop. And here is the application we're going to develop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that same audio file of me saying testing one, two. And you can see it's the same signal. And we're going to build this application where we can read in this audio waveform. And we can not only play it, but then what we can do is we can take that audio file and we can do what's called a spectrum analysis or a fast Fourier transform analysis that tells us what the frequency components of the signal are. So now that I've read it in, I can press the start button and you can see over here on the right, it shows the frequencies and I'm basically taking a window of data and showing the frequency components at different points in time. So we're going to develop this application and we're going to use Audacity to generate the input waveform. And we can not only use something from a microphone, but we can also in Audacity, we can generate signals of known frequencies that will allow us to verify our software. So let's take a look at how we can start out with Audacity and either record a signal or generate our own signal in Audacity. So now if you don't already have Audacity, I encourage you to go to audacityteam.org and it says Audacity, the world's most popular audio editing and recording app. And you can download Audacity or you can go to the download section and you can download for Windows, Mac OS or Linux. And uh, once you've got that, you can go and you can install it. I'll, I'll assume you know how to do that. And now let's go into Audacity and start from scratch and see how we can either record or generate some waveforms. So I'm going to exit out of this. And the first thing I need to do is I need to define what's called a track. So I will add a new, I go into tracks and add new. We'll do a mono track. You can also do stereo. Now that I've got a mono track, uh, what I can do is I can specify here. It says mono at the sampling rate, 32 bit float. I can go over here and change the format. If I want 16 bit PCM and I can change the rate to say 44,100 Hertz. And then what I can do now that I've got my track defined, I can generate a simple waveform. So I go to generate and I can go down to tone and this will allow me to generate a sine wave, a square wave, a sawtooth, square, no alias, and triangle. So we're going to stick with a sine wave. And let's say it's 200 hertz and an amplitude of one. And you can set the duration. Right now it's set for 0.1 second. I'm going to go over here and click. You see we've got two digits and then hour, two digits, then minute, two digits with a point you can barely see. And then these are fractions of a second. So I'm going to go here to give it one second. I'm going to go to the next one, hit zero, and this should give us a one second, 200 hertz sine wave. So I'm going to generate that. And here we go. We've got a one second of a 200 hertz sine wave. So I can play it. And that is the result. So now what I can do is I can save that as a file which we're going to do in the upcoming series, I can do file 
export audio and I can give it a name, I can give it a location, I can choose the format. In the upcoming videos we're going to use a WAV file which is uncompressed and you can set mono, you can set the sample rate, uh, the encoding and just save it that way. Now you can also record audio from a microphone. So let's show you how to do that. So now we'll start from scratch. Again, we need to generate a new track. So we'll add new mono track. And in order to select the microphone we're going to be using, we will go to audio setup over here, click on that, and click recording device and select which microphone you're going to use to record. Unfortunately, my recording microphone is already being used to make this video, but um, just select the microphone you're going to use and over here you can hit record and uh, once you do that it will record whatever comes in your microphone and then you can hit the stop button and you'll have it. So that's the basic way to either generate a signal or record from a microphone. Now another thing we can do, since we're going to be developing an application that is going to do a frequency spectrum analysis of our input waveform, it would be nice to generate a signal, a waveform, that has known frequencies in it. So what we can do is we can add a new mono track and we can go to generate. In this case we're going to generate what they call a chirp, an unfortunate name, but it allows us to generate a signal that starts at one frequency and over time increases frequency. And we're going to choose a sine wave here. It's going to start at 100 hertz, go up to 1000 hertz. And we're going to set the amplitude at the start and end to 0.5 with linear interpolation. And we can say the total duration down here is 0.5 seconds. And we can generate that. And you can see now we have, we're starting out at 100 hertz here on the left and it's going up to about 1 kilohertz. And if I play it, you can see that's the signal and it's an increasing frequency. And this will be very nice to verify our frequency analysis in our application. So then we can file, export audio and save it as a WAV file or whatever. So now what I can do is I can run our application, select that WAV file, which is a sweep, hit open, and it has plotted it. It's not showing the variation frequency because it's all packed together, but I can play it. And you can see it's got a variation of frequency over about five seconds. I did a different one that's a little bit longer, but that's going to help us. We can do an analysis. And you can see the frequency response is increasing over time. So this is a great way to verify our code. So that's about it for Audacity. There's tons and tons of other things you can do. But at this point, you should at least be familiar with how to get everything set up and installed and how to do some basic stuff. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.